Yesterday we talked about IGN and some mistakes they made in how they handled their preview coverage, specifically in Japan. I know a lot of people focused on what I said about the U.S. team, but the U.S. team might have even had permission to talk about what they talked about. So we're, we're not going to get into that. And that coverage is still up and Nintendo never took it down. But they did take down the stuff in Japan. So I just wanted to be a little forward that this isn't about them. But it is interesting to see another major outlet, this time Kotaku, claiming to have some problems with Tears of the Kingdom and Nintendo. And this is uh, this is something that is very strange to talk about, but also exemplifies that even major mass media are not exempt from Nintendo's wrath. Now, before I dive into what's happening here with Kotaku and Tears of the Kingdom, I want to remind you that we are giving away a Zelda Nintendo Switch OLED. We're also giving away a Tears of the Kingdom Special Edition. Also giving away a Tears of the Kingdom pin from PAX East. So that's really cool. You can down in the pin comment or the description to enter. Also, we're on our road to 133,000 subscribers. We're trying to match 133 years that Nintendo has existed. Now, look, guys. When we're talking about Kotaku, it's pretty obvious. A lot of people like crapping on Kotaku. That's been true for a long time. A lot of people like crapping on IGN as well. It's no secret why the IGN video did so well yesterday. A lot of people like looking down on mass video game media. And I want to note that I don't think everyone that works at these places is bad or evil. Maybe the overall corporation. I have no idea. But I, individuals at these companies are typically really well written and really well learned and learn ed, I suppose. And I actually respect a lot of video game journalists. But when mistakes are made, mistakes are made, and you need to pay the consequences. And in the case of Kotaku, they made a mistake way back in 2021. And unfortunately for them, they're paying the price for that mistake. But they seem unwilling to at least admit to it. So, uh, Kotaku writer... Ethan Gatch went out on Twitter to say this yesterday about their coverage of Tears of the Kingdom. It's preview day for Tears of the Kingdom, a huge game I would have loved Kotaku to be able to inform its millions of readers about firsthand. Unfortunately, Nintendo still has it blacklisted from advanced coverage, a move I would argue is both unprofessional and coercive. Of course, Missing in here is the context for why Kotaku is blacklisted. Because why would you provide that context if it's going to make your outlet look bad? Instead, let's talk about how unprofessional and coercive Nintendo is being for blacklisting your outlet and not allowing it to cover Tears of the Kingdom. Well, if you guys remember way back when Metroid Dread launched, they posted an article on their website Posted on October 9th, 2021. The unfortunate part, of course, is that this article has since been edited, but there's a reason it's been edited, so let's go show you the original form of this article. Thanks to the Internet Archive, archive.org, and their Wayback Machine, we're able to get an original capture of this Metroid Dread article. Now, the Metroid Dread article is stated Metroid Dread's already running great on Switch emulators. This came out on October 9th. This is, like, basically right when Metroid Dread came out. Now, covering emulation, I think, is fair game. But in this article, while they're talking about how well the game runs on emulation and all that stuff, uh, it's it, it's interesting. So the article starts off by saying, hey, real quick, if you are a Nintendo lawyer or employee, just like, don't read this. It was a silly mistake. Ignore this blog. You can go now. Okay, everyone else. It's almost like the writer and the people who approved of this article going live knew that Nintendo wasn't going to like it. But it's specifically how they did this. They basically promoted piracy day one of Metroid Dread. Let's scroll down and see what they get into. First off, they start talking about two emulators, and they link directly to those emulators. They're saying, via Yuzu open source emulator, you can now play Dread with custom controls and unlimited FPS settings. Some players have reported minor issues with cutscenes and black screens, but according to Yuzu, this will be fixed by updating to the latest version of their free emulator. And then another popular Switch emulator is Ryjinx. Ryujinx? I don't know how to pronounce it. It's able to run the game at similarly high frame rates, but it can also play at a much higher 4K resolution. So it's linking directly to emulators, and emulation is not illegal. 
So you might go, well, this seems fair game. So what's the problem? Let's get to the bottom of the article. Now, it talks about how it could run good on your PC, but if your PC sucks, maybe it runs bad. But here's the final paragraph of this. If you want to play the rest of the Metroid franchise and don't want to shell out large amount of money on old consoles and games, your best bet is also emulation. See what they're saying? They just made a whole article telling you that Much of Dread is best played via emulators and then at the end encourage you to emulate even more Metroid games. And you know, while they don't say the words... Were piracy. They don't say go out and download illegal copies of ROMs. They aren't saying it. It's very clear this article is promoting you to emulate day one Metroid Dread and the rest of the Metroid franchise. You want to know how we know? Because they updated the article twice. Uh, first, this update here you see at the top of the article. There is nothing about Nintendo lawyers. Don't watch. Go away. It's just more background information on Metroid Dread. So there was a massive edit. And uh, then at the end, here's some notes. Editor's note, per a request by Nintendo, we have updated the article to generally assert that Kotaku does not promote or encourage piracy. Meanwhile, you were promoting emulating Metroid Dread on day one. Kotaku declined to enact changes that blurred the line between suggestions and aggressive line edits to preserve editorial independence. You know, like telling Nintendo not to look at this because they knew Nintendo would be mad. Then they did a second update at 10 10 at 2, 2, 2 20 p.m. An earlier version of the story was understood by many readers to be a direct suggestion to illegally download this just released game. Because again, you were promoting how well this game ran day one on emulators, linking to those emulators, saying you should emulate this game instead of playing it on Switch. Didn't even mention how it plays on Switch. And then noted, hey, why don't you go just emulate the rest of the Metroid franchise while you're at it? Uh, anyways, they said we regret this interpretation. It's very obvious why that was the interpretation. And apologize. And then they go on to say, contact with these emulations a vital part of the world of gaming. Blah, 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 blah. But this is what got them blacklisted. This article here, day one of Metroid Dread, or day two, however you want to look at the semantics of it. And it is literally pushing people to emulate Metroid Dread day one. That's why Kotaku got blacklisted. And to be tone deaf to that is to be silly. Now, maybe they think it's been a couple years or a year and a half. Maybe we shouldn't be blacklisted anymore. Heck, maybe the person who wrote that article doesn't work there anymore. But here's the problem, and I know this because we've heard how the Kotaku process works from former staff members there. That had to go through an approval process. That was approved by people above the writer to go out to the public as is on the launch of Metroid Dread. That, to me, is the problem. It's not that they're talking about emulation. They could compare the merits of emulation, but maybe don't promote emulating a just-released Nintendo game. Like, what were you thinking? You don't see articles going up talking about emulation of a just-released PlayStation 4 game, because, by the way, you can emulate PS4 today, too. So when a new game drops, like, let's say, Spider-Man Miles Morales, nobody's sitting there day one of Miles Morales coming out and being like, hey, let's talk about how well this game runs on an emulator. Like, that's just, you don't do that. Like, it, they don't, it's Nintendo specifically. And I know some people will argue that Nintendo deserves to be emulated, deserves to be pirated, and that's sort of besides the point when it comes to this argument. This is, a, is somebody who helps run Kotaku complaining that Nintendo will no longer give them early access to games. Meanwhile, ignoring that they were blacklisted because they were essentially promoting piracy without using the word piracy, right? They were doing everything they could to skirt around the word piracy, what did you expect? You're not going to get early access while also telling people that day one you should be playing Nintendo's games on emulators. What did you think was going to happen? Did you think Nintendo was going to be cool about that? Nintendo, after just a year and a half, was going to get over it and give you direct access to their, you know, most beloved IP coming out this year? Well, just, you know... How would they know that you wouldn't take this opportunity just for clicks to talk about how well Tears of the Kingdom runs day one via emulation? How do they know they won't give you the copy of the game, you're going to dump it, and then just talk about how great it runs on emulation? Sure, what you did isn't illegal, but you think Nintendo wants that article to be there day one? Look, obviously, Kotaku made a big mistake when it comes to wanting to maintain good relationships with Nintendo. You can't do what they did in that article, and then expect Nintendo to play ball with you. So to call it unprofessional of what Nintendo's doing, 
I think it's actually unprofessional of Kotaku to expect review copies after promoting emulating Nintendo Switch games day one. Like, let's just be honest. That's unprofessional. If you're going to promote that, fine. Nintendo didn't legally go after you. You are allowed to do that. Also, when you do that, that doesn't guarantee you're going to keep getting Nintendo games. It's unprofessional to expect Nintendo games after doing that. Also, coercive? Coercive? How is it coercive what Nintendo's doing? By not giving you access to the game, you're saying that Nintendo wants to control your publication's um, ability to post you know, what they want? Well, how about not promoting pirating Nintendo games day one? How coercive is that? Is Nintendo supposed to support something they've actively, we know, are against? They're not going to do that. So if IGM was so bold as to post an article about pirating, linking to emulators, and, and talking about how great Tears of the Kingdom runs via emulation, day one the game comes out, you think Nintendo won't cut off IGN? They might forgive IGN for leaking some, some, some play demo test information out there sooner than Nintendo wanted it out there, but they're not going to forgive IGN for promoting, emulating a Nintendo game day one. So I'm just throwing out there that Kotaku, you did an oopsie a year and a half ago. Maybe swallow your pride and, and, and eat the mistake. Stop calling out Nintendo and saying they're being unprofessional and coercive over this. You deserve the treatment that you're getting from Nintendo. And guess what? Your review isn't going to lose any value by publishing it a week after the fact. If that was the case... YouTubers that do reviews won't be able to make a living doing it because most YouTubers that do reviews do not get review copies of games and thus, you know, their reviews come out a, a week later, a month later, six months later sometimes and still garner millions and millions of views. Just create a really damn good review and people will tune in for it. Now, before we sign out, uh, I want to give uh, I want to give some thoughts here on how we handle coverage of, of certain things here at Nintendo Prime. And we're not talking about titles and thumbnails and all that kind of stuff. Uh, I want to address the IGN video that we made yesterday where we called out IGN for posting things they weren't supposed to post because they were under NDA, which is a legal binding agreement, to not post these things. And then they still put them up there. Obviously, they took down the video, they edited it out, they re-uploaded the video. And I'm sure at this point, Nintendo's just kind of washing their hands of what was leaked. I haven't seen, I've seen other people on YouTube literally put the images and the direct video feed in their videos without blurring anything and not get dinged from Nintendo. So I think they're sort of letting it go because they know hey, all of us have access to this because of something IGN did. They know the source of this. It isn't like they're chasing us down to strike us like they are with some of the commercial leaks and stuff where they might not know where it came from. But um, in that video, I also discussed what the leaks were, right? I had the leaked footage in there. I blurred everything. I made one little mistake uh, in blurring stuff. I forgot to blur uh, something around like the five-minute mark or whatever. I ended up telling YouTube just to like trim that, that four-second segment out uh, and it did, it, it took YouTube like 45 minutes to process that. So I did make a mistake there, not blurring out that part, but people were more mad that I even discussed what the leaks were because they said, you're being as bad as IGN. And to that, I, I just, I just have to say, no, uh, I am not another NDA. I was not invited to play this game early. I am just a reporter, I am a YouTuber, I am just a person discussing information that's already public. Should that information be public? No, but it is. And if it's public, I have a right to talk about it. This does not mean my channel is going to go and spoil the whole game for you guys. I have made this very clear that once the game leaks, we're not talking about any more leaks for Tears of the Kingdom. That's just the way it's going to be. It doesn't matter if I see the leaks. It doesn't matter if I know about it. It doesn't matter if I've seen hours of gameplay. I'm not going to talk about any of that once the game leaks. This was a demo leak, and it was something that IGN just did an oopsie on. Uh, I do still stand by the fact that IGN should not have leaked that information out there, and Nintendo probably should have some sort of punishment for them, although I don't think Nintendo will. I also have found out since making that video that IGN Japan, I called it like a subsidiary or like a, you know, a, just like a small part of IGN. They're actually owned and operated completely independent from IGN here in the United States. I didn't realize this at the time of publication. I, did, I found this out 
uh, with some research I dug into. So they're actually independently ran. So they really made all these decisions completely independent of IGN, uh, the home IGN here in the U.S. So I, ju I just wanted to point out that, you know, I still stand by that IGN shouldn't have done it. But once it's done and the information's out there, it is a leak and we are going to talk about it. And I did warn before saying anything, spoilers. I think I said spoilers in the video like four times. But I know it like literally the four minute and 43 second mark. I said, now let's get into the spoilers. And then I paused for a second and then I rambled for another 10 before I even said what the spoiler was. So I gave plenty of warning and a little pause in there to dip out of the video. I did that intentionally for people who wanted to avoid what the spoilers were. But, you know, maybe, maybe in the future I could do something like throw up a warning on the screen, like a spoiler warning visually, not just audibly, but I did technically warn. So look, I, you, you can call it unethical. You can say that I'm as bad as IGN. I'm wasn't under any agreement with Nintendo not to talk about this stuff. They were, um, it once it's public and everyone else is talking about it. Why wouldn't I, right? It is, it's whatever you win some, you lose some guys. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for tuning in. I am Nathan Harold Jans from Nintendo prime. We'll catch you in the next video.